a famous prize held by Dazza Williams. But before him, Roy Rutherford claimed it. And both know the British featherweight title can be hard to hold on to. Jamie McKeever looked set to reign when he became the champion 16 months ago. Rutherford got his chance to challenge at short notice and how he seized it as McKeever wilted. Rutherford had to defend against Williams. Both thought they'd done enough, and it was hard indeed to pick a winner here. Dazza Williams is the new British Paraguayan champion, and there's some raised eyebrows at the ringside of Adam. But it was the belt Williams always dreamed of. Now he wanted to show himself a worthy champion. Against McKeever, Williams produced his best yet. But Rutherford's been waiting patiently for his chance to show the title should have been his all along. Williams is the defending champion, though. This is his chance to establish himself. Williams against Rutherford, live for the British featherweight title from Hereford. Yes, Hereford. Beautiful part of the country with so many attractions, especially when the weather is like this. But disputes in the prize ring round here generally get sorted out in that office. No mistaking the relaxed air around the place though. You couldn't in all honesty call it natural boxing territory. Here at the Hereford Leisure Centre, one man is doing his best to change all that. Williams, an adopted son of Hereford. Dazzle, how excited are you to be bringing championship boxing to Hereford? Oh, I'm not, um, really enjoying it, like, yeah. Looking forward to tonight and everything. It's going to turn out to be a good venue, like. Are you confident you put another notch in that Lonsdale belt? Yes, yeah, definitely putting another notch in the Lonsdale belt, and I'm very confident, yeah. Thanks, Dazzle. Thanks, Doc. Craig Slater got a word with him there, and to his great credit, Williams has had a word for everyone. Really feel he's growing into the part of British champion, and certainly Hereford has woken up to him too. 1,200 seats went like wildfire here. In fact, there were returns, just a few, and queues of people waiting for them here in Hereford. So we're in for a first ever British title fight here, and hopefully it will end the arguments between these two and give us a truly established British featherweight champion. And you know, there haven't been too many of them since Barry McGuigan's day. That's a few years ago now. <laughs> also tonight, we're here to look ahead to one of the biggest nights of the year in boxing as history beckons. Some of the true greats did it, becoming multi-weight world champions, and Oscar de la Hoya intends to surpass them all. Being a sixth division champion, it doesn't come very often. It's never come before. But side by side, the undisputed world middleweight champion, Bernard Hopkins, looking for an 18th defense. To have 20 defenses in one weight division, in any weight class, from super heavyweight to mini flyweight, it's very, very difficult. Get the idea? He's hungry for much more. Oscar De La Hoya first has to deal with Felix Storm, though. They meet for the WBO World Middleweight title as Hopkins makes his title defense against Robert Allen. And big plans await for both of boxing superstars should they come through. It's a special event on Sky Box Office. You can see it live in the early hours of Sunday morning, 2 a.m. it's underway. It's repeated at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning and again at noon on Sunday. And the number to call for information, 08705 800 888. And in Las Vegas already, Jim Watt and first, Ian Dark. And the first thing to tell you is it's absolutely boiling here, over 100 degrees in Las Vegas, and hot action this weekend as well, because I think what we've got coming up in September is the modern-day equivalent of Marvin Hagler against Sugar Ray Leonard. Hopkins, the Hagler-like figure, the greatest middleweight of his era, De La Hoya moving up through the weights and looking for a sixth world title. But, Jim... They've got to win this weekend first. Yeah, exactly. We can afford to look beyond Saturday, but the fighters can't, especially De La Hoya. This is a massive night in his career, his sixth world championship. But he also has the added pressure of looking good doing that to set up the Hopkins fight. Huge night in store on Saturday. Everyone says there's a bit of a formality for De La Hoya this weekend. He's fighting Felix Sturm, who's 20-0. He's the WBO champion, but he is a fully-fledged middleweight. It might not be that much of a formality, Jim. 
It may not be, but I have to say he's boxing a totally different class to Sturm. He's had more world title fights than Sturm's had fights. Yeah. He is a heavy favourite, so we, I think we have to stick with Oscar in this one. Bernard Hopkins has been the world middleweight champion now for nine years. This is his 18th defence. He fights Robert Allen, who he's already beaten, but Allen has won 13 on the bounce, and he is the number one contender. He's deserved another shot. Of course he does, yes, and Hopkins is the best middleweight in the world. He's proved that, so whoever faces him is going to be underdog. But I don't think Robbie Allen would worry too much about that. I think he's been an underdog his whole life. He'll be looking forward to this, giving his best shot. And all I can say is thank God the fights are indoors this weekend because even the rattlesnakes are slithering for cover from this kind of heat. Surely the hottest place of all is going to be in that ring on Saturday mm. night, Barry. Are either foregone conclusions? I don't think so for one minute. I think De La Hoya's up against it. This guy's a fully-fledged middleweight. He's 25 years old. He's negative. He's uh, a good boxer. So he really could put up a very difficult night's work for Oscar De La Hoya. Excitement building down in Las Vegas. But, Barry, how about our top of the bill here in Hereford for your old title, the British featherweight crown? If you put these guys together ten times, every fight would be close. They're both fit, very determined, and they both desperately want to win. I can't wait for this one to happen. Much more from Barry. That's our top of the bill later. But there's a warm welcome back here also as we get our live action underway for this man, Peter Culshaw, now 31 years of age, the Liverpool former flyweight, up to bantamweights tonight, but a talented craftsman and hoping even at this age to finally start to deliver on his talent against Andre Kostin, the Estonian tonight. But it should be something of a new beginning for Culshaw. All set to go then, our Master of Ceremonies here in Hereford is John MacDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Hereford Leisure Centre here in the historical market city of Hereford for tonight's Championship Boxing proudly presented by Barry Hearn for Ringside Boxing Promotions in association with Prince Promotions and Matram Sport and all sponsored by PokerMillion.com for a great game of online poker. And a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live and exclusive here on Sky Sports. You've joined us for the very best ringside seat in the business. All the officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Every representative, Mr. Charlie Giles, Inspectors Chris Dolman, Di Corp, Harry Carroll, and Ivor Bassett, and our medical officers at ringside, Dr. Chowdhury, Dr. Bindle, Dr. Fitzgerald, and Dr. Chapman. Well, let's get the action underway in the bantamweight division. Eight rounds international bantamweight. Introducing to you, firstly, our visitor. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red and white trunks, weighing in at eight stone and five pounds and bringing an 18 fight record, 14 wins, five inside the scheduled distance and four losses. He's from Estonia. Please welcome Andre Kosti. And across the ring, fighting under the blue corner, wearing the black trunks trimmed with gold, weighing in at eight stone, eight pounds, four ounces, 26 fight record. 24 wins, 12 inside, the scheduled distance, just one loss and one draw. From Liverpool, it's Peter Pulshaw! <laughs> Timekeeper at the bell is Tony Dunkley, and referee in charge of the action is Grant Wallace, and this is eight three-minute rounds. You've had your instructions, obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. Interesting return to the ring of one of our most talented little men of recent years. Liverpool's skillful Peter Culshaw at the top of our domestic rankings for an age, but inactive, unable to secure the big fights Last appearance, March 2003. Time to shed some rust and get back in the mix. And Glenn, it's, it's a welcome sight to have him back. It is a, a very welcome sight. He's a very good fighter and there's good fights out there for him in the future. And I'm sure he's more welcome than anybody to be back. The Estonian Andre Kostin who Colshaw must deal with, and his big rival, Damien Kelly, blew Gostin away in a round, and that left hook already has registered. 
Or was he just caught cold against Kelly? Or is the flaws and is he coming apart, Costin? He hadn't been stopped before that electric performance from Kelly in the King's Hall in Belfast. And Coleshaw already starting sharp and snappy. Well, you think there's got to be a bit of ring rust, but he's getting his punches on well enough, Coleshaw. The timing looks OK. The right hand landed well. <laughs> Craving to get back in the ring after some political problems outside it. Now under the Tommy Gilmore promotional banner, as are most of the other flyweights and bantamweights in the country. Should be some good matches to come. Well, that's what we want to see. We want to see the best in this division fight each other. And I'm sure Kulshaw, he wants to mix with those names. Just a little bit out of range. Off with his timing there, Kulshaw. But to be expected with such an absence from the ring. Costin looking to try and land with a few body shots and then a, a right hand over the top the eager to put on a show Cole Shaw send a statement out to those domestic rivals and uh, he may harbour a move into world class still but he is 31 now Austin trying with the short hooks, just landing on the arms of Culshaw. Culshaw, the straighter punches having the better effect. Attempting that right hand, Andre Costin. But the better work from the Merseyside man in the open. You come back for more, you don't have to hunt him. A team you may not have seen for a while, Colin Moorcroft, trainer of Peter Colshaw, who's back. Yes, early on, he got the, the better punches on. A couple of that just seemed to rock Costin a little bit, but he recovered well enough to, to get through the round. Here's the second of eight, eight stone six bantamweight division, the black and gold of Peter Colshaw, who's in his 27th fight. Been around for years against Andre Costin, who's in fight number 19. Gave a good display against Dale Robinson a few years ago, but beaten easily by Damian Kelly. Can Colshaw inflict the same sort of result? How difficult is it coming back after such a break? Well, I think it's always hard, but that's an exceptionally long break for him. And, uh, you know, he's got to, it's got to mess him up mentally as well. You know, fights being cancelled, fights just not happening, um, you know, changes in promoters. That's always a, a worry, that's always problems. When really, as a fight, all you want to do is work, is perform. He was waiting for that showdown with uh, Belfast's Damien Kelly, but Kelly got his world title shot against... Irene Pacheco in Colombia. Right. Maybe later this year they will finally get it on. Although Jason Booth can be added to the mix as well, the IBO Super Flyweight Champion. Could be good times ahead. It could be. Just a nice division. In this one, though, Culture just not finding the range in this round. Austin just messing them around a little bit. Has won 14, the man originally from Freiburg, Russia, right. now fighting out of Estonia. Can handle himself if he gets into the fights. Costin just slapping a bit around the, the outside. 
Michael Shaw looks for the straight punches, but still just can't find out the timing. Is it a question of ring rust so far? So he looks a lot bigger, Cole Shaw, than Cosson. He's coming at 8-8, eight, eight, but he says he gradually wants to get the weight down. That's a good, sensible idea, isn't it? Yep, that's um, the right way to go about it. Costin, an awkward sort of style. He's small and he leaps in with these hooks. Just made it a little difficult for Culture to get the timing. It's a better right hand, but Costin still competitive. And giving the former Commonwealth flyweight champion certain things to think about in there. Fight action on Saturday night gets underway on Sky Sports 1 and top of the bill on Saturday fight night. Matt Skelton's defense of the Commonwealth heavyweight title against Bob Mirovich. Also look out for Graham Earl against Bobby Vanzi for the now vacant British lightweight title. Saturday fight night from 10 on Sky Sports 1. Here in the uh, bantamweight division, Peter Colshaw makes his boxing comeback. The uh, choir boy... He renamed himself the Choir Master when he was doing well. Can he come again back to title contention? A few things to deal with this Andre Costin, who's uh, got an awkwardly effective style. Yes, he just leaps in, he comes in very low, he's short, he's stocky. It's just made it a little bit difficult for Pulshaw to, you know, to get the punches on straight ahead. And, He's just aiming pretty straight, and some of them are, are missing as the you know, erratic style of Costin just avoids the punches. Despite being out for more than a year, he's actually taken this at fairly short notice. He hasn't gone to the Canary Islands, Peter Colshaw, as he normally does to train in the heat. He's been working in Liverpool, so may not quite be in as good a shape as he would be, say, for a bigger name. But he's got to look good. Well, he'll want to impress against Costin, especially the way Damian Kelly dealt with him. And, you know, we did obviously look at the, the punch resistance of Costin after that fight with Damian Kelly not being a puncher. And, you know, we're just wondering how he did that in such good fashion. Look at Costin come forward with combinations of his own. Game and brave, isn't he? Yeah, that was good from Costin, but Kulshaw just checked him with a, a right hand that just steadied him back a little. Tentative with the jab, Kulshaw. Quite get his movement, his accuracy right, and a body shot from Costin. Costin's having the, the better of it so far in this round. Just jumping in and getting the punches off. He did win three on the spin before the shock defeat to Kelly. Costin, and he's uh, really wading in with some of these. Kulso just falling asleep a bit in this round. Needs to pick it up and go to work. Not turning into an easy night's work by any means for Peter Colshaw. He must stick to the task and keep on top of Costin. Here the choir master hitting a few wrong notes in this round. Yeah, difficult session for Colshaw. Good old dip, I'll just keep that long in the lances here. Just let him walk on to Everton, Pete. Make it easy. Hey, feel good. Hey, shoot, keep shooting the jam. Colin Moorcroft there with the advice. Wants him to keep it long, agree? Well, I think that's that's right as long as he keeps working because he's keeping it long and getting caught at the moment. 
with these lunges from Costin. Badly needs win number 25, Peter Colshaw. Five foot six inch man from the Heighton area of Liverpool, very amicable outside the ring, big right. football right. fan, loves the Reds and desperate to get his career back on track. But Andre Costin making life difficult for him. Hasn't come to lay down here. Well, he's really got to pick it up for me, Culture. He's got to take any sort of ambition out of Costin because I think he'd be the type that, you know, if he starts to get into this fight a little bit, could start making it difficult for Culture. Will Culshaw try the advice of Colin Moorcroft and right. pump that jab out, keep the distance, use those skills that won him the ABA light flyweight title back in 1991? He seems to have been around forever. Yeah, he's been around, uh, uh, he has been around an awful long time, fighting at a, a decent level all the time. Culshaw won the national schools title 18 years ago. Boxing is what he's done his whole life. And he now wants to cash in in the next couple of years. Can he? Or has that break been a bad move? Well, he's really just got to start picking it up. We want to see a lot more punches from Culshaw. The jab's got to really be rapid fire. Just waiting a bit too long and Costin coming in with these hooks, which is just disturbing Culshaw. Growing in confidence to Costin. Maybe he feels Culshaw can't really hurt him. Has stopped 12, the Liverpool stylist. That's a bit better. Well, that's what he's got to do, try and beat Costin to the punch. Costin just starting to get a bit of momentum into his work, and, and that could spell a little bit of danger for Culshaw. Tries to get that jab working. Is there a bit of snap and speed missing with Colshaw, who has come in heavy and uh, finds it difficult to grind his body down to anywhere near flyweight always has with the, the layoff Adam I wonder if motivation has been quite a bit of a problem in this one it's you know it's not a, a you know a high key fight so I wonder if he's had trouble doing that well, let's see how the former European super bantamweight champion Spencer Oliver seeing things he's with Craig Slater well Spencer is turning into a bit of a struggle for Peter Colshaw is that down to ring rust mainly yeah, I mean, he's really struggling in there. He has been out for a year now, and he's coming eight pounds over the flyweight limit as well. And he's looking a little bit sluggish, timing off, landed a good left hook in the first round and never really capitalised on that. And he's struggling to find his range in there at the moment. It's corner telling him to pick up the pace, but is he capable of that? But that's what he needs to do. He needs to start working, getting in behind that jab. He's neglected the left hook since he landed it in the first round. He needs to start working the left hook off that jab, and really putting those combinations together, getting up close and starting to work the body. And Costin, is he growing in confidence? Costin is definitely growing in confidence. You can see him in there since first since the first round. He's easing into it and really really going in confidence. And this is quite an even contest. Thanks, Spencer. Spencer says it's even. Do we feel it's pretty level from this view of ringside as we go into the second half? Well, I certainly do. I've got it um, dead level at this point. And all to fight for, and really, you know, that looks bad for Culshaw, who it's hard midway in a fight. That's how I've got 38, 38. It's hard midway in a fight, just changing your levels and picking it up. Costin, the one who's just round by round, just getting a little bit better, trying that little bit harder. Culture's not. Has had some close affairs before. Peter Colshaw. Zalili Mabiti Oscar Andretti when he was defending his WVU title. And Costin now starting to feel more at home, even though he's so far away from Estonia. Well, he looks well conditioned, Costin, not carrying any excess, very muscly on that little frame. 
could Kilshaw be short of a, a bit of condition? Been boxing since August 2000, Costin. This would be a pretty amazing win if he could pull that off. But he walks into a jab of Kilshaw. The uh, pedigree and class is definitely with the home fighter. But is he using that? No, he just looks flat, and he has done since the, the first round, Kulshaw. Better with the, the body punching there. And I think that's what we need to see, a bit more variety, mix it up, but definitely use that jab. What brought him his uh, career best win over in uh, Carnival City, when he beat the uh, legend of those parts, baby Jake Matlala, was... Uh, Concentration and speed and angles and movement. Good boxing skills. Looks like he's just starting to switch on a bit, Kulshaw. We we'll get the concentration going. He's just stopped a, a couple of the attacks of Costin with nice counters. Is it just a case of it gets easier round after round after an activity? Well, I think. That will happen, you just start remembering the moves, things will come back to you in a, in a fight condition. Good left hook to the body though from Costin. Brought a bit of excitement from Philip Fondu alongside us in his corner. Costin not as busy in this round. Uh, Kulshaw just managing to beat him to the punch. Moving better now, Colshaw, warming up at last. On round six, Peter Gold, sit down. Peter Colshaw, quick up off his stool there, eager to get on with it. Well, the computer says he's landed more, but the success with Costin. Is he starting just to grow into this now, though, the Liverpool fighter? Second out, round six. Just appeared to be thinking about it more, just gritting the teeth and starting to concentrate. And he certainly needs to do that. Maybe a wake up call as he returns to the professional ring, a uh, lackluster third and fourth by Peter Colshaw's high standards that he's set over the years. Is his mind back on the task? And Andre Costin, who turns 28 on Monday. Is there anything more to his makeup, or have we seen his best? Costin, you used the word flat a couple of rounds ago. Isn't that the answer to Coleshaw tonight? Well, he definitely is flat, and he definitely needs to try and pick it up, and that's often difficult. But the one way to do is just start throwing punches, and that's the thing that he just seems to be thinking about the punches that bit too much. It's waited for so long to get the fights with Damien Kelly and Jason Booth. I wonder when they actually happen, whether they may be a touch late for Coleshaw. But having said that, after two or three more warm-ups, maybe he will be back to his very best. Well, I think the opponent's difficult. I think he's got a jerky style and he can't really get a rhythm and a flow to his work, Coleshaw. I don't want to re really make excuses for his performance. It's not an exciting performance from Kulshaw. Costin has success with the left hook and the right hand over the top. Not often you see Peter Kulshaw hit quite as much as this. Looks like it's fairly heavy weather in the ring for Coleshaw. Well, he found that the left hook. And that was the first one, really, since the first round that 
registered as a good solid blow. Costin's worked throughout the round with body punches and done a bit more. Tiring slightly, question mark for Peter Coleshaw, who took just a hold on there. Well, they've, they've held frequently, haven't they? Well, backstage, a man preparing to regain his British featherweight title, which he thinks was robbed from him when he fought Dazzo Williams last time. Roy Rutherford, fitness fanatic, good, solid, professional, and surely in with a chance, Glenn, in this 50-50 fight coming up. Well, he's fired off, he wants it, desperately thought he was robbed last time out, and he'll be trying very hard, but as Dazzo Williams got the extra confidence and fighting at home. Rutherford was telling us earlier, no excuses tonight, everything has gone absolutely bang on. Training brilliant. He said it just will go down to whether he gets his tactics right on the night. And he was quite secretive about what they'll be. Interesting. Back to uh, Peter Colshaw's intriguing comeback fight, which has not, Glenn, gone smoothly. No, it hasn't. Intriguing by its lack of fire, and that fire from, from culture, really. We'd expect them just to, to do an awful lot better and come in, you know, trying to make a little bit of a name for himself and back with a, a bang, but that hasn't really happened. All been a, a bit flat. He's got a couple of rounds to try and make a dent in Andre Costin, who's lasted over six rounds longer than he did with Damian Kelly. And people will compare those performances because Kelly was coming back off the world title defeat and Corshaw's coming back off a break. Well, most of all, the fighters will compare that. And that'll be in Kelly's mind if and when they meet. Who have you thought was the better fighter over the years with Kelly and Corshaw? Well, I think Kelly's never really lived up to his potential. He's he, you always thought he could do that, that bit better, and I think his lack of punch power has held him back. So Culture, maybe you thought was the, the better of the two. But they might not be when they get in the ring together. Fighters do change. 31 years of age. Remember Peter Culture. I think he'll just want to get this one out of the way and forget about it. That's better from Culture. He's got to let these shots go. Not get beaten to the punch. Austin trying to keep going, trying to keep that momentum in his work. Yeah, rips in a body shot, Costin. Small swelling by the uh, right eye of Peter Culture. Just moved house. Left hook as well gets home are his best years behind him you've got to ask well Costin landing two good left hooks rushing forward he looks the, the stronger of the two at this stage more of a quiet reserved look on the uh, face of the affable normally motor mouth Colin Moorcroft his trainer Taking a bit too long to deliver his punches? Uh, an awful lot too long. He really needs, you know, he's thinking about it instead of letting the shots go. And you can tell there's a lot of, an awful lot of ring rust there. And I think they maybe thought this fight was going to be easier than it's turned out to be. I want to see a win at big though. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yeah. Some comments like little slappers. Oh, there is, you're, you're towing them and you're standing there watching. Do you hear me, Pete? Bing, bing, and you're having a little look. Yeah. Step out and use your legs. Three minutes to go, Pete. Yeah. It's hands-eye, nice, nice and careful. 
And yeah, make sure you win this round, big. Do you hear me? Make I sure you win one it one. big. They know it's close. Well, they've got good reason to worry. He just hasn't really performed. It's not that Kostin has been super exciting or had a brilliant Little performance. Kulchor just hasn't done away, his work. A little bit of work like this round, big. Win it big. Do you hear me? Lynn's unofficial card, it will be Grant Wallace, the referee, who will decide, is it all on this final session? Has Peter Colshaw, after a bright first couple of rounds, well, he needed that left hook, that wobble, Andre Costin, that'll give him confidence going into the final round, because you think he needs a big finish. I think he needs a, a very big round. Maybe a, a knockdown, even. So he wobbled Costin there, like he did in the opener, but couldn't blow him away, as Damien Kelly showed us was possible. Far from it. This has been tough. Well, I think Costin will be very disappointed with his performance, but he's got to try and pull it all out now. Yes, with all these uh, enticing matches down the line, Dale Robinson, Johnny Armour to throw in as well. He just needs the win. Well, it's definitely a loss. Really sets him back, and you know it's a, a foreign opponent. He, obviously, the fights would still be there, but confidence-wise and all the rest of it, it doesn't look good if he gets a loss or even a draw here. The only previous defeat and his 11-year professional career came at the hands of A.D. Lewis in eight rounds. This would be a huge upset if Andre Costin can pull this off. Does he deserve to? And Costin's wild in this round, just missing a bit too much. He's trying to keep it together and keep the punches going straight, Culshaw. It's very, very close, no doubt. Well, I think he might be lucky to just to get a, a draw out of this, Culshaw. Right. Messi, final round. Who wants this? That bit more. Something's wrong. Yeah, he just hasn't mentally been there throughout the, the fight. And, and, you know, that happens to boxers, happens all the time. You've just got to pick yourself up. Is it an activity? Is it fitness? Is it a mental thing? Is it age? All the questions that Colin Moorcroft and Peter Kulshaw will be talking about after the fight. New promoter Tommy Gilmore, too. But has Corshaw done enough? Well, for me, the draw is the best he could hope for. He's lost Andre Costin in a big, big upset here in Hereford. That's the second defeat, only the second, in Peter Corshaw's long boxing career. And what an absolute nightmare. Well, that was terrible. He'll be very, very disappointed. I thought he might have just scraped through with a, a draw in that. He tried to pick it up in the last round, but couldn't do it. And Costin comes out a winner. He tried hard. I thought if he let him in the fight, it would be difficult. And that's how it turned out to be. So Peter Colshaw comes back in uh, awful fashion. Back to the drawing board. I thought the wait this one. We're going to fight the rust the next one. I remember that. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing, referee Grant Wallace has scored this contest for Colshaw, 76 points, for Costin, 78 points. Your winner from Estonia, Andrea Costin. Costin and gets it win. by two rounds. Great from Grant Wallace and uh, awful for Peter Colshaw. All the credit in the world to Costin Barry for being fit and ready, but what can you say about Colshaw? 
very unprofessional. He should not have accepted that fight at this stage. He just blew, blown his chances here. You know, this is professional boxing. You get in there when you're in shape. He looked completely out of shape. He just didn't lose. He lacked snapping. He looked. He lacked fitness. He had no urgency about his work. He had no combination punches, no pace, no nothing. I mean, that's really dreadful. He shouldn't do that. It looked like his new promoter, Tommy Gilmore, was frog-marching him back to the dressing room for, yeah. a, for a dressing down. Yeah. Well, he underestimated the guy, as simple as that. And he, he wasn't, there was no urgency about his work. He just didn't look fresh, he looked stale. He's given off to him, he's saying to him here, look, God's sake, you just blown it. You had your chance. Why did you accept the fight at this stage? You shouldn't have accepted the fight. It's... Uh, it would be interesting to hear what he's saying. Anything going forward that he can rescue from this situation? Yeah, well, I mean, there is, there is a future, and there is the chance that he gets himself back into shape. But, you know, it's a, it's a hard lesson. You do not get into this ring, a ring like this, under that sort of pressure, in bad shape, and that's simply what he done. Two excellent professionals here in Hereford in our top of the bill tonight for the British featherweight title, coming shortly, Williams against Rutherford. And looking ahead to a wonderful weekend, we feature Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins in action. And as Adam Smith reports, that means men trying to emulate some of the true greats. Boxing legends have won world titles at different weights. Roberto Duran captured four. Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard managed five. Now Oscar de la Hoya aims to become the first fighter ever to win six. Being a sixth division champion, it, it doesn't come very often. It's never come before. Incredibly, De La Hoya's first world title was in the Nine Stone Four Super Featherweight division. He breezed through the lightweights, and his light welterweight belt came when he defeated the great Julio Cesar Chavez. Welterweight and light middleweight titles followed, but the higher he's come, the harder it's been. Now an ambitious tilt into the middleweight division against WBO champion Felix Sturm. Are you mad or sensible doing this? <laughs> I'm probably mad. People are thinking I'm mad. Um, I think it's going to be fun. Um, and the reason why I, I say fun is because it's a new challenge. At 31, De La Hoya's body's matured, but can he handle the tricky move up? Shane Mosley withstood his firepower at 11 stone, so how effective will he be at 11 stone 6? I've brought my power up to 160 and my speed, which is very important. I'm going to utilize my, my experience, which, um, which is gold. Beating Sturm will show De La Hoya's made the transition. But to become true world middleweight champion, he must conquer the best. Alongside, Bernard Hopkins makes the 18th defense of his crown against Robert Allen and wants to further his own legacy. To have 20 defenses in one weight division, in any weight class, from super heavyweight to mini flyweight, is very, very difficult. This weekend, the chance to judge whether the long-standing king or the glamorous new middleweight will ultimately prevail. I know I'm going to struggle inside that ring to, to beat these guys. So, so it, it's a challenge that, that I'm looking forward to it, actually. I'm, I'm looking forward to beating the king of the middleweights, and that's Bernard Hopkins. Well, at least he's being realistic. It's a great idea, but how hard it might prove in practice. Thoughts on that from Las Vegas? Jim and first Ian. Well, the great Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas the Hitman Hearns won world championships at five weights. Can Oscar De La Hoya do it at six? It really would be some achievement, Jim. Yeah, maybe even more so considering Oscar has come all the way from super featherweight. But we have to remember, he is heavily favoured to win this. I mean, to keep the, the, the fight in context, we're already looking forward to the unification match with Hopkins. But he still has the job to do. Yep, he started off at 9 stone 4. This is 11 stone 6 now. There comes a point, doesn't there, Jim, where a fighter can't extend himself anymore. His strength and maybe his speed just not there, maybe, at the new weight. You know, I'm surprised Oscar is still in the game. He told us he would be retired before he was 30. He keeps finding new challenges. And this is a big challenge, but the Bernard Hopkins thing is a massive challenge. 
He's changed his training regimen as well for this fight, not in the mountains at Big Bear where he always goes. He's been in the steamy heat of Florida. Is that because he's been fading late in some recent fights, do you think? It could possibly be that, but if you look at Oscar's career, there's been several changes throughout his career. He brings in new trainers. Sometimes, as they say, a change is as good as a holiday, and he always gets the result, that's for sure. And then there's Bernard Hopkins. He's so underrated, isn't he? He's not a big world star, but he just might be the best boxer in the world at the moment. Yeah, well, De La Hoya embraces the media. Hopkins does not like it. He just wants the job done. He's one of the old-fashioned style. Oh, what a great fighter. Yeah, great contrast between them. Should be great if they do meet in September. And it's good this weekend as well. A 14,000 sellout here at the MGM. <laughs> no surprise there, then. Back to Las Vegas for more later as the build-up continues to De La Hoya against Storm and Hopkins against Allen. And you can see it all live from Las Vegas, a special event on Skybox office from 2 a.m. on Sunday morning. It's repeated at 8 a.m. and again at noon on Sunday. And the number for information, 08705 800 888. 08705 800 888. It's always so special, and he has defied the doubters so often, Barry. But is there a natural limit, physically, to what Oscar de la Hoya can encompass? I think there is a natural limit. I think he's reached his limit. 11 stone uh, is probably, he, he started losing power at 11 stone. He wasn't having the devastating effect that he had at lightweight and at welterweight and light welter. He's, um, he's not having the same sort of power, but he's got his experience, he's got his speed and his technique, and he's truly a marvelous modern day fighter. And you've got to give him a chance with anybody. We can hardly wait for Saturday, but this could be pretty special here tonight in Hereford too. And as Craig Slater reports, this place, at last, has something to shout about again after all those years. It's no boxing mecca, but Hereford does have a knockout tradition. Oh, what a screamer from Ronnie Bradford for Hereford United! And 32 years after the famous FA Cup giant killing of First Division Newcastle, Dazzle Williams wants to get the ball rolling for boxing against Roy Rutherford. I can see Roy coming on, coming on for it because obviously he's going to be training for it because it's the second time around and uh, he's going to be hungry like, but I'm, I'm even hungrier. It's not just for winning the championships, just to prove to myself that I can beat this guy. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one, big time. Williams claimed the British crown from the Coventry man amid real controversy. And he's given it to Dazzo Williams. And there's some raised eyebrows at ringside about that. I still think I won it. And, um, I threw the cleaner shots. He might, he might have done a more work rate, but he, he wasn't catching me. He's got his another chance. Um, I know he's going to be training hard for it, and I know he's going to come for it, so I'm ready for it. Like. And against Jamie McKeever, he looked a worthy champion. How much has he come on since becoming champion? Since he won a title, he just wants to train hard and, and work hard. You know, and uh, he's putting the work, you know, and he's determined to get himself even better, you know, he's got to improve. After this fight, then um, I'll be looking at the likes of Nicky Cook for the European and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, to me, it's a stepping stone, but it's a stepping stone I can't afford to slip off. But Rutherford has his own agenda, and having won this title himself in McKeever's backyard, won't be phased here. Down goes McKeever! It's not really any new thing for me, so at the end of the day, I said times and times again, you know, at the end of the day, it's just me and him going in the ring. The crowd's not going to help him. A sharp punching technician, he believes tactical adjustments will give him the edge. He knows that he can last the pace and he can fight hard over the, the, the latter rounds of the fight. So all he's got to do to himself now is put the same effort into the earlier rounds. Just make sure keep going and going all the time. And just make it really sharper. And at this key stage in both their careers, defeat just isn't an option. I've got my chance here now, it's just up to me to do it. I'm 120% confident I'll be champion again. Barry, first on the champion, has Williams had due credit since he took charge of this title? Well, it's, he won the title and, and it was shrouded in controversy, so I don't think he has had credit. And he's a bit miffed about that, but he showed against McKeever that he's a much more mature fighter. He showed another element to his career. He boxed beautifully. He showed that his tail has been lifted when winning the title. But when he fought for the title, I thought he was extremely lucky. I thought that Rutherford had clearly won the fight. 
Uh, it was a tremendous night, and he got very miffed about that, and he, he didn't like what myself and Jim said. But the bottom line is, you know, we are professionals. We just give our professional opinion. And as far as we were concerned, and the 3,000 people who were, who were at the fight, they all thought that Rutherford had won as well. And with every due deference, it is his professional right to disagree fundamentally with what you said. And he does, <laughs> course, and yes. he still does, yes. and he thinks he did not get credit for the yeah. work he did in the fight. Yeah. Well, I don't think he won the fight. It was a great fight. It was close, but I thought Rutherford clearly won it. And he just done the, the cleaner punching, and he finished strong, and I just thought he looked better. OK, well, we're never going to agree on this, okay, are we? We're not so, agree. to look to tonight, what yeah. must Roy Rutherford do to make sure this time round? Well, he hit on it uh, in his interview there. He must start uh, fast. The last time he started slowly and he allowed Will uh, Williams into the fight, he's got to start fast and keep the pace high and make a clear win for himself tonight. But I'll tell you what, I don't fancy him here tonight. I think Williams has improved as a fighter. And I know it'll be close, but I still give Williams a distinct edge. Is it going to be easier for Williams now he's broken through some of the barriers that applied last time they met? For example, going 12 rounds in a championship fight. Yeah. For example, against a man who'd beaten him as an amateur, if you remember. Yeah, that's true. I don't, think, um, I don't think it's going to be easy for him, that's for sure. But I think he's a more mature fighter, he's a more complete fighter. And I think that that experience and the, the performance he showed against McKeever will add to his performance tonight. And I think he'll win, but it will not be easy. It'll be another tough fight what must make a difference. However, Roy Rutherford, who's very experienced away from home, tried to deny it, is the sort of hometown support that Williams can call upon this time. They're really, really getting behind their man here. It's all new to Hereford, but it might just be the start if Williams can pull this off tonight. He hopes the British title could be the start for him too, and as we've heard, already fancies moving up to European level. The only trouble is, that was the career path Rutherford had planned for himself, and that's why he so badly needs to win this one. Our Top of the Bill is next. <laughs> Flaming June, a massive month of boxing, and Saturday fight night on Saturday week, that's June the 12th, at the MEN Arena, Glenn Johnson and Joe Calzaghe meet for the IBF World Light Heavyweight title, and Ricky Hatton is back in action against the tough Argentinian Carlos Wilfredo Vilches. That Saturday fight night on Saturday week, June the 12th. It's a 10 o'clock start that night on Sky Sports 1. Here tonight, Hereford has truly come alive for its first ever British title fight. Our MC is John MacDonald. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Challenger from Coventry, Roy Rutherford. Coventry's consummate professional, Roy Rutherford, enters hostile territory and a champion's backyard once again. Fifteen months ago, he rose to the occasion and dethroned Merseyside's popular Jamie McKeever away from home. Now he attempts to repeat the feat against Dazzo Williams. Add that to the spice between the pair after Rutherford narrowly and controversially lost his British belt to Williams. And Glenn, we have a dangerous challenger whose desire is very real. Well, he believes he won last time, he believes he can win again, and that makes him certainly dangerous. It's going to be hard to overcome the, the crowd that are going to back Williams, that's a big thing, but you know, he's a quiet man, but he'll go about his business and he'll work hard, he'll be fit and he'll be ready. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the champion from Hereford, it's Dazzle Williams! That's the British title, first time ever in Hereford. They've come out in their droves, a fabulous 
small hall atmosphere, 1,200 seats sold in this sauna-like arena. And Dazzo Williams has done most of that personally from a stall in their main shopping centre. The Cathedral City becomes a boxing hotbed for a night at last. They had a sporting success story in an area who's lived on that Ronnie Bradford goal. Remember that one, Glenn? <laughs> I thought you said you weren't going to mention that. But anyhow, it's great to see a non-boxing town get behind their man. That's wonderful. I'm sure he'll really feel like it. He'll feel it. A million dollars in there. A British champion who's done it the hard way. And look at how they line up. This is going to be very, very tight. Both 30. The slight height advantage to the hometown favourite inside the nine stone limit. He's got the reach and he'll be looking for the skills and long range boxing. Williams. Rutherford's been around longer, more experience. Only Williams is 30 fight tonight. Neither man big punches, so expect a long affair, which could swing and twist in turn. Prestigious British featherweight title at stake. Ladies and gentlemen, Barry Hearn for Ringside Boxing Promotions in association with Prince Promotions and Matchroom Sport. Proudly present for your entertainment, 12 rounds of boxing for the British Featherweight Championship. Sponsored by PokerMillion.com for a great game of online poker and a very warm welcome to our sports fans joining us live and exclusive here on Sky Sports. You've joined us for the very best ringside seat in the business. Standing room only, all the officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Representative in charge is Charlie Giles of Birmingham. Timekeeper at the bell is Tony Dunkley and referee in charge of the action from All Hallows in Kent is Richie Davis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they are the officials. Here are the contestants. Firstly, and introducing to you, the challenger fighting out of the red corner wearing the black trunks weighing in at eight stone, 13 pounds, two ounces, 25 record, 17 wins, 7 inside the scheduled distance, 2 losses and 1 draw. He is the former British featherweight champion from Motor City Coventry. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Roy Rutherford. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the champion. He's fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks and weighing in. Eight stone, 13 pounds, seven ounces. 12 fight record, 10 wins, three inside. The scheduled distance and two losses. He makes his second defense. He is the reigning and defending British featherweight champion from the beautiful city of Hereford. It's Dazzle. Richie Davis really having to strain his voice amongst this atmosphere. They meet for the third time, and on the previous occasions, both tantalizingly close and controversial. Roy Rutherford picked their amateur clash in 97. Dazzo Williams took that 115-114 decision to wrench the British nine-stone belt from Rutherford last November in Belfast. So, who's the better and more improved fighter? There seems virtually nothing between these two. 
Is it all about who gets it tactically right tonight? Well, it all depends on really what happened last time. Who can grow from the result last time? Will it be Rutherford who got spurred on by his controversial defeat? Or will Williams just get the confidence he needs to make him that much better? Rutherford started slowly in Ireland. The team know he must try and put some rounds in the back because Williams is so very, very fit. Looking for the uppercut, early Dazzo Williams. One criticism from uh, people was that he didn't use his skills well enough, Williams, at long range in their first fight. Well, he's got to mix the skills with the determination and the, the real hunger to win here. Dazzo, the crowd, call out to the man who was born in South London but has adopted Hereford as his hometown. Good body shots. Rutherford felt those here in the first. Yeah, it was the other cut was a good shot that just stung Rutherford a little bit. Forced him to cover up. Has Dazzo Williams grown? Because he has the Longstall belt. It's his title on the line to defend, and he did it ever so well against Jamie McKeever in Bridge End. Well, it's a good start for Williams. He's really loading up. He's looking to hurt Rutherford early. tries to come back with a big cluster. One or two picked through. Already intense. Neither one known as a big puncher, but they're both trying to load up and look for the heavy shots. They want the early initiative, that advantage, that confidence boost. Gritty little battlers. It means so much to the two of them. Great first round. For standing room only. Every seat sold by this man, Dazzo Williams. He wanted it in Hereford, but he's delivered, hasn't he? He certainly has. That was a good start. It was that of a cut. The legs just buckled slightly, covers up Rutherford, but he's in a little bit of trouble there. And that was a very good start for Dazzo Williams. Kept the punches going in. Rutherford tucked up, used this as an extra experience and got through that little spell. Rutherford did well though and came back and even managed to get a little cluster of punches on Williams that just had him covering up a little bit. Here's the second round. British featherweight title. Such a well on the belt through the years. The white trunks of Hereford's Dazzo Williams, 30 years of age, the same as the challenger and former champion Roy Rutherford from the Bell Green area of Coventry. He's come with belief, Rutherford, that he got robbed when they met before and believes he will get it right again here. Jab working, Williams. That could be a, a potent weapon. Yep, I think that'd be a very good punch for Williams to use just through the middle. It's quite a high held defense that Rutherford has, and punches around the outside is difficult, but through the middle are good. Winging the hooks, Dazzo Williams, relishing this defense. Says he'll be 120%. He's that confident he's going to win. Rutherford 
This could be seesaw all the way. <laughs> it certainly could. It's seesaw at the moment, isn't it? Both them landing. Good shots. <laughs> Williams again works the body. Now the head of Rutherford just stuns the Midlands man momentarily. Well, they're both setting themselves, planting their feet, looking for the heavy shots. What a terrific start to what we hope will be a tightly contested battle. Again, looking for that left hook to the body. Williams, what makes this interesting is both can be hurt as well. That's right, they both the tens look a little bit vulnerable, but both come back swinging. This does look as if it could go either way, doesn't it? Every time they both lunge for a punch. Commitment and desire are plenty from both fighters. Who will break? They can't surely go on at this pace. Well, what a great opening to a fight we thought was going to be very good. Williams just getting the better of it for me. Just more shots, more accuracy. Superior start from Dazzo Williams, but Roy Rutherford will attempt to push him every bit of the way. A very warm welcome back to the first boxing in Hereford for 50 years, and what a way to come back. Well, it certainly is. The putting the shoe on for the, the, the non-boxing fans. I think there might be a few more boxing fans after this from Hereford. Usually art and music festivals around these parts. Cultural market city tonight. They're getting a really good fight. So far, so good. Third round here. Williams has made the more effective start, but Rutherford has had his moments too. Really has got an intensity about him, hasn't he, Dazza Williams? Loves swinging in that left hook, but caught by a right hand. And leave himself open, Dazza Williams. And Rutherford trying to get hold of the middle of the ring and back Williams up now. Well, that could be the problem for Williams. If he just overcommits himself, leaves himself open, that's where Rutherford could get through. Work rate, accuracy, commitment, first class here in Hereford. A little spell for Rutherford, but Williams clenches his teeth, and you see the determination in his face. Both have trained so frenetically hard for this. Rutherford, a fitness fanatic who's been sparring with Derry Matthews, the tall Liverpool fighter. Williams, who's been abroad and has finished off in the Welsh Valleys. Good. Couple of shots from Dazzo Williams. Rutherford came back. The heavier artillery with Williams. The other club working so well there for Williams. The legs just looked heavy there for a little while from Rutherford. Has been down before, Roy Rutherford. Tremendous right hand at him from Rutherford. This is what domestic boxing is all about. How well matched are these two? Again, he's had some good times in this round, Rutherford, but just a little bit more from Williams. Just that bit more in incentive. Rutherford believed he had done the more superior work in Belfast. Williams 
the pressure and more punches. We're seeing the same sort of development. It's more exciting, no question. Well, the time's very free singing, free swinging, isn't it? scored with a couple of peaches of shots there but Williams comes firing back and at this point just seems to want it that bit more it's only the 13th fight of Dazzo Williams's professional career is he getting better with each experience in the ring fight number 21 for Roy Rutherford he's had a bit of a slow burning career until that night where he won the British title against Jamie McKeever now he wants it back. Good use of the jab from Williams. Excellent start. Brotherhood has to try and pick his work rate up a little bit more than he is. He's allowing Williams just to force the tempo of the fight. Both inside the nine stone weight at the first time of asking, but uh, Rutherford's campaign at higher weights in the past had to grind his body down. Williams has come up from super bantam weight, maybe a more natural featherweight now. Defensive work for Williams as well as he just pushes forward looking for his jabs. And the uppercut. And I'm sure that left hook to the body will come into play again from Williams, who's making better use of his reach and boxing skills here. And it's, Will it's Rutherford who's got to try and find something different here. He's got to try and follow the course of this contest. Oh, eye-catching right hand from Dazzo Williams. And Rutherford, who wanted that fast start to get the rounds behind him, is not doing that. Rutherford trying to get the jab working, but falling short for that. And if anything, just laying himself up for another one of those right hands. watching a man who has got a bit of a leap in what he can do and this is the difference another good round for Dazzo Williams and Rutherford at the moment just not doing enough can't get in range getting picked off but they're working so hard can they keep it up Statistic in particular, Glenn. Yeah, 66 landed to 42 of Rutherford. It's quite telling because all of those punches seem to be slightly harder as well, don't they? Dazzo Williams, who was booed in the King's Hall, Belfast when he got the decision over Roy Rutherford. He was furious about that. Says he's going to make sure, no question this time, get rid of Rutherford forever. But there's so much respect between these two. That was a good left hook going in there from Williams, who's just that little bit sharper as well. Beats Rutherford to the punch. Is Dazzo Williams a much younger 30-year-old than Roy Rutherford is? Well, he's less experienced, he's had lots of fights, so that obviously might tell a difference, but I think the, the question is now, he's come on so much, hasn't he? He wants it. Top from 
Dazzo Williams again the left hook to the body, He's grinding Rutherford down, who's still throwing shots, but less than he was in the first couple of rounds. The jab working as well, that's upsetting the rhythm of Rutherford. Left hook dug into the ribs again from Dazzo Williams. Back comes Rutherford. What's he got to do, the Coventry challenger? Well, it's so hard because somehow he's got to try and take the play away from Williams. And Williams is also the better boxer. You know, he can rely on that. He can move around and use his jab when he has to, as well as this intensity that he's showing us. Will Rutherford grow into this fight as he has so often before down the stretch or is he losing too many rounds as Williams really fires in these shots this is a hungry hungry fighter it really is the fighter with something to prove I think he's also enjoying being in front of his home crowd who are roaring him on aren't they the best atmospheres in a leisure centre we've had for a long time. Really, really intense. The heat in here and the electricity that are coming from the fans as well. Rutherford, for his part, trying to keep it together, trying to salvage something and get something going in there. Needs a punch to turn the tide a little bit. comes through the Williams guard but it's not often enough and these rounds are being ground down by Dazzo Williams as he switches southpaw to confuse Rutherford further get him to really lift his play he's got to try and beat him Williams to the punch and that looks very very hard here's the sixth round is it five nil to Dazzo Williams referee Richie Davis scores remember Williams in the white trunks with the white boots defending his British title yeah that's how you've got it five nil on my card Five well four round with Rutherford always having a play in every round. But Williams, that bit more work. That's it, doesn't really tell the story so far. I mean, you can't take your eyes off this. No, he's winning in very good hard four rounds, but he's doing that bit more. Going forward on the back foot, you know, with a jab, with a counter, he's just got that extra punch. Rutherford shake Williams at all. Seven stoppages only in his 17 fights. But then Williams is no big puncher either. There he just gets uh, the jab going again and then switches to the body. Good variety, isn't it, from Dazza Williams? Absolutely. Both former English ABA champions. It is Williams becoming a more polished professional, a harder man. Imagine those fitness sessions with Steve Robinson. You couldn't get a fighter fitter than Steve. That's right, that's obviously paying dividends, isn't it? Really worked hard, getting himself in fine condition. Will Williams tire, or is he as fit as the camp say he is? Because Rutherford's always had good stamina. Well, that could happen. Talking to the Rutherford camp, they were quite confident about their man. They really worked hard with him. 
combinations, the quantity, the quality from Dazzo Williams, improving round by round that he's become British champion. Very impressive. Well, Rutherford doing a little bit better in this round, but even on the back foot, he comes away with something, doesn't he, Williams? He can just skip away and switch here and just you know, knock the head back. Again, Williams digs in. Has to take one on the way. That'll give Rutherford confidence. At the end of the sixth round, let's see how uh, Spencer Oliver is seeing it with Craig Slater. Yeah, terrific contest for Spencer. How firm a grip does Dazzle Williams have on it? Well, Dazzle Williams is the one that's getting off of his shots first. He's the one dominating in there at the moment. And when they get inside, he's throwing a lovely right uppercut and getting success inside as well. If Roy Rutherford wants to get into this contest, he's the one that needs to start getting off of his shots and a little bit more movement. Rutherford at the moment is trying to play in Dazzle Williams' hands, trying to press forward, and that's where Williams wants to be. Williams is the one dominating at the moment. I thought at a terrific pace. Can this go 12 rounds? Well, Williams just starting to tire there towards the end of the sixth round, looking a little bit tired. And Roy Rutherford, as always, shows that grit and determination to try to come back there. At the end of the sixth round is still a long way to go in this contest. Williams for you? Williams at the moment, all Williams. Thanks, Spencer. All Williams, says Spencer Oliver. But was there just a mini, mini shift in the plot with the last ten seconds of that round? Well, I didn't even think the last ten. I just thought overall, I thought Rutherford just nicked that last round. And there just seemed a little change as Williams just fractionally look to tire how much energy have they both given and consumed and have left this has been fought at an absolute hectic pace as we move into the second half will this be Roy Rutherford's territory he badly needs rounds There's the, the variety working well, he's come out looking for action there, Williams. Friends and family on their feet at ringside for Dazzo Williams, where Rutherford's brought a few two from Coventry. A lot of interest domestically in this one. bit of a merry-go-round this British featherweight title of late people losing it at the first defense in Dazzo Williams you think we've got somebody who can go on and uh, keep retaining this well the way he's fighting so far certainly he looks one that's got a, a good few defenses in him but you just sense that Rutherford's not quite done with yet it's an unbelievable life Roy Rutherford he Works nights, trains in the day, just pushes Dazzo Williams down, but a certain tired look suddenly from the Hereford man. Yeah, just the fact that Rutherford can do that, can push him back. He hasn't been able to do that so far through this fight. Put so much effort into this. Dazzo Williams just stands at his nose, can mark up from time to time. Still coming away with the punches though, even though he's starting to tire. Could the second half of the fight be Rutherford's? Rutherford just starting to impose physical strength. Remember, he campaigned at lightweight as an amateur, fought as a super featherweight in his last fight out. And look at this show from Roy Rutherford. Very, very good, isn't it? And I just sense that Roy Rutherford senses maybe Dazzle Williams is tiring. Because he's picked it up. He's the one that's starting to throw more of the punches and having the biggest success, and that's Rutherford's round. Crowd are loving it, but are they slightly worried? Steve Robinson there, Di Gardner. 
you're doing. You push your arms. You're doing too much arm dribbling today. Okay, okay. Push them off. Second one, second one. Push them off. Just stay there. Yeah, yeah. Suck it in, suck it in, says Steve Robinson. You can barely hear him in this uh, incredible atmosphere. Yeah, you can just tell he's starting to tire. The legs are looking a little wobbly as he tries to keep his balance. But that's obviously a, a short of tiredness. But isn't he coming on stronger, Roy Rutherford? The British featherweight title that all this hard work the weeks of training the amount of leather thrown so far unbelievable and they're still only in round eight dazzo williams the champion with the much much better start but roy rutherford's gritted his teeth he's weathered the storm and in the last couple he's made it a different fight Williams and tries the uppercut, but will he run out of puck? Is there a possibility? Well, with this sort of intensity, that could certainly have it. I'd like to see Williams get back behind that jab a little bit, just take his time, just try and get a, a breather in the fight. Switch hitting again, Dazzo Williams. Doesn't want to let the round slip away, as Rutherford has more success here in the middle part of the fight that's what happened in belfast rutherford came on strong are both finally feeling the pace well, it had to happen, but who can pick themselves up again? Both having their successes in this round. Williams just looking to box a little bit more. That's what he needs to do. Just give himself the time to get a breather. Crisper work from Roy Rutherford, though, here in the eighth round. Three good shots, heavy against the head. Of Williams just holds on there. Dazzo Williams, the former army man who had to suck up a right uppercut. That was the punch he was getting through with early on. Oh, this is good. Changing patterns in the fight, still with the same intensity. How much hunger and ambition is in that ring? A huge, huge amount. Well, it shows what that old belt of Lord Lonsdale's means to fighters. An awful lot. Punch for punch there. Rutherford with a wry smile. There's a bit of blood from his mouth. Surely cuts had to happen as they again go toe to toe in the middle of the ring. Richie Davis hasn't had to do anything. saying you've got to work harder impossible <laughs> well they're going to try and push him as hard as they can that's their job they've got to instill that desire instill that passion into their man and they're doing a good job because Roy Rutherford is just getting himself back into this bit by bit clawing his way back get it says the wise old voice of Di Gardner he just tended a little nick in the red corner to Roy Rutherford's left eye nothing to worry about I'm sure unfortunately there's only four rounds left we could watch this all night couldn't we <laughs> 
but I'm not sure they could do this all night. It's hard enough doing it this long. Small blemish under the left eye of Gazzo Williams, too. Who will finish better in these latter rounds? Has Williams got enough of a lead in the first half? Good body shot and then turned it to the, the head punch. Looks like he's getting a bit of a second win, doesn't he, Dazzle Williams? Come on, full of fire. First minute of the round, work rate up again from Williams, but this may be where Rutherford has his little burst. Better shots coming from Williams so far, though, in the night. And it's Rutherford's turn to look a, a little sluggish, a little heavy-legged and tired. That jab, Roy Rutherford, and uh, tumbles to the ground. That may be a sign now of Rutherford's tiredness. They must be absolutely shattered, the pair of them. They are fighting for pride and that coveted British title. Look how much it means. Well, they're putting on a treat, aren't they, for the people of Hereford. They've waited a long time for a, a British title fight, and they're certainly going to enjoy this one. The balmy early summer's evening here. You are witnessing a small hall sizzler between Dazzo Williams and Roy Rutherford, which is an absolute pleasure to be ringside for. Just hasn't got it going in this round, Rutherford. He jumps to one side, then the other, trying to get an angle, but hasn't got the, the strength to get the punches off. Sucks the air, Rutherford digs his boots into the canvas. But Williams makes the breakthrough again, and look what that means to him. And this is why they want the British featherweight title. Look at this history. Peerless Jim Driscoll, who held it 1907 to 13, the great Ted Kid Lewis. Fabulous fighter. The Welshman Howard Winston in the 60s. And our own Barry McGuick. Look at that, and he's loving this one. Paul Ingle, fabulous fighter and currently our world champion, who's in action later in the month, Scott Harrison. And Dazza Williams, the only fighter since Scott Harrison to retain the British title. And uh, Glenn looks like, and I only say looks like at the moment, he's on course to keep hold of it. Well, it's such a good fight. I would like to still pick a winner. He looks stronger in that round, but you can guarantee Roy Rutherford's still got a bit left in him. He's not going to give up on this. Nine minutes left. And if they're anything like the first nine minutes, we're in for a treat. And Rutherford gets through there. And Williams wobbles. And again. Good right hand there from Rutherford. That one stopped Williams in his tracks. No knockdowns yet. Will there be as the fighters tire from their incredible effort? And Adam, one of the things here, when you get this tired, every punch takes a toll. It's toll. And a fighter can just fall apart at any point. in the uh, arena, the strength and the punches. We saw recently how uh, 
Matt Skelton just overstrength Michael Sprott for the British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles. And Sprott really just capitulated in the last round. Will we have a similar ending here? Yep, the time comes when you're physically all done and it, it just, you're fighting on instinct. And that's what I think these are two are probably doing now. Tasty looking right uppercut from Williams. He tries it again. And you've got to wonder how Richie Davis is seeing this because some of these rounds have been very close. Rutherford looking to push Williams onto the back foot, pressure him to the body. Williams missing with those shots. Right hook from Rutherford, much to the delight of his corner alongside us. But Williams comes back again with shots that will take the eye of Richie Davis. Overall, he just seems to have done that bit more, Williams, unless he suddenly unravels in the closing rounds. Rutherford's doing well on the back foot, he's back against the ropes, he's getting through with some nice shots. The other cut was a good one. Richie Davis whispers down to us at ringside, great, great fight. I'm sure it's up there with those he's refereed before. A little bit less from Williams that round. Child says Die Gardner, they're really trying to egg him on. Yep, I think Rutherford got the, the better of that round. He did some good work on the front foot and on the, the back foot. And you can see he's desperately tired, Dazzle Williams, and they're really trying to pick him up. They don't want him to drop his head. Nearly a thousand punches thrown. Congratulations on that so far, but look at that. 160 landed, the stats favour Dazzo Williams. So does Barry McGuigan alongside, asked by a long way, Glenn, have you got it tighter? Yeah, I've got it uh, quite a bit tighter. I think Williams has done some good work now, the 96-94 in Williams' favour. But I've had Rutherford coming back a little bit over the second half of the fight. Isn't it going to be one of those that springs up yet more controversy? I think both fighters will feel they've won this. They've certainly worked hard enough to win it. Oh, good punches from Dazzo Williams. Again, the accuracy and added tempo of the champion seeing him through. He goes back to the corner, and that one minute recharges the batteries, but he's took a couple of good shots from Rutherford there. Legs just split there of Dazzo Williams. Roy Rutherford may be able to sense that. Comes back with the, the left two. How on earth are they throwing so many punches still at this late stage they've done it every single round tries for the combination Rutherford misses and it's Williams who gets the, the cleaner punches on uppercuts have been a success for Dazza Williams it hasn't been the uh, easier punching display that saw him retain against Jamie McKeever a couple of months ago. This has been rugged and hard all the way. I must say this is the sort of fight you don't want to have too many times in your career. Good right hand there from Williams. Went straight through and Rutherford felt that. Suddenly he looks 
tired. They've really worked the body, the pair of them, trying to outdo each other for fitness and stamina. Well, what excellent work, hardly a clinch. Davis is just standing on admiringly, I think, just enjoying working this fight. Both connect there. Rutherford tries as he has done in the last few rounds, in the last part of them. So hard. But is that another one for Williams? David Dazzo Williams, who had that terrific first five or six rounds. Surely he's got enough in the bank, and Rutherford needs the knockout there. Yeah, I would think so at this stage. I think Rutherford does need the knockout. Dobador, he'll be trying for it in the last round. I'm expecting a tremendous 12, as the, the other 11 have been. Both connecting the shots there. Rutherford, the uppercut, Williams, the right hand. A truly fabulous fight. 11 scintillating rounds for the British title. And I don't think it's quite over yet. Well, Williams will want to give his fans the, the big finish. Rutherford knows he's got a bit to do. He sold all these tickets, Dazzo Williams. He's worked so hard, and his confidence has grown, and his ability too. And Rutherford pull up some major surprise here in the 12th, or is he staring a more convincing defeat in the face? Still throwing punches. 12 torrid rounds of boxing. But he's just had that extra motivation. He's just worked that bit harder, Dazzle Williams. Both 30 years of age, quite old for featherweight, especially Dazzle Williams in his 13th fight. It's a testament to their character and their training teams to have uh, performed in such memorable circumstances. Look at Rutherford, still so game, still trying, still hoping. Been a tremendous challenge from Roe Rutherford, really has worked so hard, deserves a lot of credit. Hereford have been devoid of sporting success over the years, but as we enter the last minute, are they going to have a coming home party for Dazzo Williams? Because the quiet Cathedral City will be fired up tonight if Williams retains the title, which surely he has. Yeah, it looks like this round's going his way as well. He's going to be a more comfortable winner this time around, Dazzle Williams, but he's deserved it. This is not world-level boxing that you're watching, but for the British featherweight title, admire the effort, admire the dedication, admire the commitment. This has been one of the best domestic fights of the last year or two, hasn't it? It really has. It's been a pleasure to watch. Dazzo Williams retains his British featherweight title on the night of his life. He's sealed the victory over Roy Rutherford. He's made sure 
What an effort from the Coventry challenger. And how about the crowd? He congratulates them. I think there's more than 1,200 in here tonight. They've made it an absolutely memorable night. And one we shall save a watching back. Fabulous stuff. And conducted with grace. And a great deal of respect mutually between these two warriors. Yeah, the crowd certainly enjoyed it. Tommy Gilmore's got a, a broad grin on his face. Huge amount of punches, great fight, well done Dazzo Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, before the referee Richie Davis would like you to show your appreciation. That was 12 fantastic rounds of boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, please. You have just witnessed the fight of the year. So the official scorecard, Rutherford 112, Williams 117. He is still the British Bullerweight champion from Hereford, Dazzo Williams. And now to present the coveted Lonsdale belt, our representative in charge, Charlie Giles. And ladies and champion gentlemen. growing into the role. What spirit between For these two country, throughout Ray and afterwards. Rutherford. And Rutherford's getting a magnificent hand here. But it's Williams' night, no question. Barry, what were your thoughts on Williams' performance? He was much more mature. He's blossomed as a fighter. His lateral movement was better. His body punches was better. He was just a more complete fighter. His combination punches was better. He really was a more slick fighter. He used his jab beautifully and when he had to. Still a bit wild and a bit fractious at times, but I think in general, he has just blossomed as a fighter and he's shown the maturity that he's got from winning this title. We need them. So, thank you, Barry. We need to watch him. It's only his 13th professional fight tonight. Craig Slater's going to talk to him now. That's a tremendous performance, but how deep did you have to dig in those later rounds? I had to dig in deep tonight. I know Roy come for it. I know he was fit. He was determined and I ate him some good bloody shots in the first, in the first five rounds. And he just kept on coming back and I knew he'd be stronger. I had to dig in hard there. That was an hard fight. And I hope I've cleared the decision now. Like everybody said, I lost. I won it by controversy, but I hope I made it a clearer statement tonight. You glad to see the back of Roy Rutherford? You look forward to a fresh challenge now? I am. I'm glad to see the boy back of Roy. I'm looking forward to my newborn son coming in 10 weeks' time with my wife Kate. But um, I've got a good team with me. I've got Tommy Gilmore managing behind me. I've got Steve Robinson, Dag well, Let's bring in Tommy lads. Gilmore. Some uh, big fights potentially in the pipeline for Dazzo. Nicky Cook's the European champion who need a rest. But can you make that one? Well, I, I, I don't see any difficulty because it, that is going to go to post offers very shortly. But whether we do that route or whether we take another route, I would like to see Daz in the Lonsdale belt outright. And if we can do another night like this in, in Hereford, then that's what we should do. Dazzo, briefly, uh, a word for your Hereford fans. What part did they play? Oh, brilliant. I mean, the atmosphere. <laughs> I didn't want it to get to me, but I couldn't help look around and it's unbelievable. And, like, what a lot of fans are. They've never had boxing up here for years and they uh, just listen to them. Well done. Enjoy the party tonight. Well done. He did take a risk, you know, Barry. But he said, above all, I want to fight for the British title in front of my home public. Yeah. He's a winner all round, isn't he? Yeah, well, it was one of the best domestic fights I've seen in a long time. The effort and energy in every one of, every one of those punches. You know, Dazzo's not a natural puncher, but he threw everything into those punches, and so did Roy Rutherford. That's off to him. He tried his very best. And there are no spring chickens at 30 years old. Uh, but he has matured and blossomed, and he looks a more complete fighter. He's a long way to go yet, but Nicky Cook's on the horizon, Alonzo Belgrade's on the horizon, so great stuff. And didn't we see tonight and here tonight just what all that means, the tradition of a British title yes, and the Lonsdale Bell. Absolutely, and the Hereford crowd here, you know, we'll come again here, this is a magnificent crowd, and if, uh, you know, Tommy Gilmer's lucky enough to win the first bids, I'm sure he'll try and stage it here. What an atmosphere. Is he getting better, Williams? He's definitely you? getting better. He's things to do. And I know, you know, as I said before, he's no spring chicken, but he is improving. And his body punch was really sublime. To the left hook to the body was fantastic. It came home to roost in the late rounds. And I just think he was a much more improved fighter. Thank you, Barry. 
Flaming June, straight on to Saturday night. It just keeps coming. Matt Skelton tops the bill, defending the Commonwealth heavyweight title against Bob Mirovich of Australia. Graham Earl and Bobby Vanzi for the vacant British lightweight title. That gets us underway. Saturday fight night from 10 on Sky Sports 1. And then in the early hours of Sunday morning from Las Vegas, Oscar De La Hoya, Felix Sturm and Bernard Hopkins against Robert Allen. Two of the superstars of world boxing, all lined up, I hope. Join us, Sky Box Office, 2 a.m. It's repeated at 8 and at noon on Sunday morning. 08705 800 888 is the number to call. My thanks again to Barry McGuigan. Thank I hope you. very much that you've enjoyed it too. It has been a memorable night and a memorable fight. <laughs>